Hi guys. So where we uh, sorry for the delay, but it is you know it's a new system, so there it is taking time to adjust yourself. Anyway, so before we actually start, what we should do? We are going to briefly summarize everything that we discussed in the last lecture. Uh, so, who can voluntarily raise his hand and uh, voluntarily, no, I will not ask. Anybody who wants to summarize the contents of the previous lecture. Go ahead, no problem. Even if it is wrong, so what? I'm not, I don't have a stick in hand, don't worry. I'm not gonna be. <laughs> okay. Anyone? Yes, please. Oh, yes. We have one. Okay, we discussed about uh, information systems and what else we discussed? Uh huh. Organizing how to organize uh, information flow out of the system, within a system, how it goes into the system and goes out of the system. We also discussed some examples of organizations which are running with uh, some software systems. For instance, yes, oh sorry, ATM, ATM machines. Right? Hospitals, banks, hotels, universities. Uh, someone of you has given me uh, one example of the system that is running for you. Orders. Okay. You guys are well familiar interacting with orders. So maybe uh, for your better understanding, we will try discussing orders during our lectures or maybe we can also take other examples from around hopefully or and other than that what was there so if i ask you guys to deeply or to go into the details of the information in supermarkets Who would like to go or who would like to describe? Anyone? Feel free. I, I really appreciate who take initiatives and go ahead. It is a matter of, you know, we need to build some. Uh, what I feel is you guys need to build up some confidence. You need to build up, of course. You do, you do have, but initi initiative is very important thing. Normally, so students are scared. Oh, if I say, uh, if I say something wrong, maybe my students make fun of me, my friends uh, sitting around me. But indeed, uh, it is better to be a fool for five minutes rather being fool for the lifetime. Do you understand what I mean? Right? Make your confusions clear. Ask, discuss with me, with your friends, with anybody else you can. Okay. Uh, so, we were here. Uh, that to develop uh, any information system, normally uh, within an organization, they follow the approach uh, using different methodologies, tools and techniques. Uh, methodologies are well established that we can follow. 
to develop some information system. Uh, but techniques may be different. For instance, some guy is using a methodology, let's say ABC. We will discuss methodologies in detail later. And somebody else uses the same methodology. But to solve a to solve a problem, this guy may use one technique and the other guy may use another technique. Similarly, tools. What is the purpose of the tool? If we say we are dependent on methodologies, techniques and tools, and how tools can help us in solving a problem? Tools always help us accelerate our job. Uh, for instance, for instance, give me some example of a tool that you use. Let's talk about in your home. Physical. Yes, physical tools, right. So, Screwdriver is a tool, right? Okay. Do you use screwdriver? Why? To open screws. Okay. Uh, Without the screwdriver, can you open the same screw or close it tightly? No. So, why do we, even if I use it, if even if I use my fingers, I can still screw it, I can tight it. But the problem is, I cannot tight it as much as it is. So, I need a tool to support, to, to accelerate, to perform it more perfectly, with perfection. So, similarly, we need tools that can help us to solve our problem. Okay, we will be discussing in quite detail with examples later. But before I go further, we need to understand couple of terms. One is application software and other is systems analyst. In fact, uh, the system within an organizational context, we will develop the normally, uh, normally the output of that system would be some application software, right, which supermarkets or banks are using in order to, I mean, they capture, they record your data, process it transfer data from one component to another component of the system and so on. So those are the application softwares. But what is, who is a system analyst? System analyst. The guy who is responsible to analyze the system. Normally, when such systems are developed, They are developed by a team, by a group of experts. Uh, everybody is actually analyzing the system according to their requirements. For instance, system and user do have system uh, different requirements. Uh, then. Uh, other than end user, for example, administrators, they do have different view to look at some system, to control it. His analysis would be different, but there is a, but there is normally a guy who is indeed responsible to perform these job. He is actually bridge between the two parties. The one party for whom we want to develop an information system and the other party is the team that will actually develop this team, the development team. Normally, 
do not understand the business mechanisms business procedures of the organizations of companies so systems analyst is the most responsible guy right in the middle who will actually coordinate with the development team and also coordinate with with the company or organization for whom we want to develop a system oh i'm sorry i'm just i should stay away <laughs> okay so systems analyst normally systems analyst could be any guy maybe uh, a project manager can serve as a system analyst so this guy should have understandings from both views from development from analysis from design or whatever we call it as a system so this is the key guy after this course we expect from you for we expect from you somebody to be a system analyst maybe someone of you might opt to go for being a system analyst in future in his life outside okay now we are coming towards a methodology that what software development methodology is it is a standard process followed in an organization to conduct all the steps necessary to plan to analyze to design and to implement and then finally we uh, deploy the system and then later on maintenance is also required feedback is also required uh, not mentioned here but all these phases planning analysis design implementation maintenance feedback they are part of the systems development life cycle we i will shortly be calling it as sdlc sd lc systems development life cycle uh now systems development do have some major phases the major phases as i talked in the beginning of this course are here too for this course one is the systems analysis and the other is design part on which we will be focusing most of the times okay now uh we go further and we can see that uh traditionally a methodology in uh systems analysis and design for to develop a system an information system we need to go through these phases and you will be following up these phases in your final year project as well remember this thing so you need to understand you should have a an understanding here you know in this course one thing is very wide like this guy can propose one solution to a problem the other guy says no i don't need this solution i have a better solution so i can find out it's not like mathematical problem that there is a certain statement you are going to find a problem for that and no solution no other solution exist for that problem it's not that mathematical it is quite subjective when i say subjective this means this means there is always there is sorry more than one solutions different people may have different opinions it's not that objective objective means there is only one solution to a certain problem either problem is solved by this guy that guy or other guy 
there is only one solution like for example you guys attempt questions in exams multiple choice questions normally multiple choice questions have only one solution now everybody is supposed to make a tick mark on option c if c is the solution somebody taking mark on b that's wrong but if somebody is asked if question is asked in a way like say describe this or describe that so this guy will write his own stories he will write his own stories the third guy will write his own stories so we have 30 students in the lecture you will i will see 30 different stories making me mad so i would have to work hard to understand to look at to look and digest your opinions okay but so planning analysis design implementation and maintenance okay you can see in these figures start if you look at this uh, left uh, figure the figure represents a quite general picture it represents quite general. general picture of systems development life cycle every system you will develop as I said earlier you would have to follow these you would have to go through these phases uh, first that comes planning then it comes to analysis, then it comes to design. No one can make a design without an analysis. We cannot jump. Right? And then after design, no one can implement without a design. So it's a cycle. When I say systems development life cycle, once all the phases are completed, then we have to, after implementation and maintenance, we have to give some feedback to the system. It is not written here, but feedback is given back to the system. Why? To improve, to identify flaws in it. Okay. Uh, with the help of feedback, we can better plan if we have a better planning that means we will have better analysis having thorough deep well organized analysis will give us a better design and better design means implementation better design will be reflected in its implementation as well now uh, on the other hand if you see you can see an evolutionary model this is quite general methodology we simply follow step by step but on the other way it is evolutionary uh, can someone let me know the name of this figure like this what is that we call it as huh? loop is always connected it is not like it's expanding spiral this is also called in software uh, in systems development life cycle SDLC this model is also known as spiral model if you look at this model uh, all the phases of SDLC are shown around starting from one axis this axis is known as go no go axis so let's say 
we want to develop a system for a certain for some company for some organization we will start evolutionary this evolution is based on our scope let's say we have a huge problem i would say i cannot look at into i mean look i cannot handle a huge problem what i will do i will take some part of that and i will focus on it and i would not think anything about the overall main problem i will take a part of that and start doing some analysis if you see here on the slides i mean look uh, here this is the go to go axis and this is the starting point and this is a small segment that lies in the analysis segment right this portion is actually dedicated to the analysis phase so i take small part of the problem and start analyzing it when i say analysis what does that mean that means that i will start identifying the requirements requirements of the system requirements of the users requirements of the process but then data gathering techniques etc how to ask people there are different ways how we can ask people do you think if i want to gather data from the users i would go one by one to them what approach could be better sir i i can conduct a survey an electronic survey or a paper based and can ask my questions within that survey uh, people would give me some responses and i will record them and later on i will analyze them from that analysis i will see i will understand that oh yes this is what actually user are demanding these are the requirements of the users so this is part of the analysis so i will take a small part i will do some analysis on it <coughs> as expected or as required then i will take that analysis to the design phase i will try to organize information that i have identified during the analysis phase i would see what information is required what is not required and how one component of a system can interact with another system after it is well established well designed in a structured way or in or using some other methodology object oriented i would implement after you see here after analysis we are in the design phase and then we continue to implement the design we have made and after that we are here at some axis go no go axis once i arrive at go no go axis this means i would have to think i would have to rethink carefully that until this point i have implement system i will try to judge myself what problems i have faced right what resources i have used what financial budgets are there how much is left how much is required so from every perspective once i am satisfied yes the part of the problem i have implemented 
is up to the mark users are satisfied or i as a uh, part of the development team i'm satisfied then i will continue this means if i continue i would say okay let's go ahead then i will take another part i will increase the scope of the problem this is what that is reflected here now uh, in this planning i will take some other part you see this is a short analysis and here we have taken or increase the scope of the problem and then i will continue do you get my point or no that's very clear hmm very clear so before increasing the scope of your problem you must have to check everything from resources point of view from financial budgets from uh, satisfaction of the users from uh, implementation strategies we need to think is it really feasible normally we prepare some feasibility reports in our planning when we start some project and those reports uh, let us know either this project is really good to implement is it uh, there are different kinds of feasibilities ec economic feasibility technical feasibility right we will see in details any one of you who do not understand feasibility this is out of the scope quick slightly but the term i have used here so i would uh, prefer you guys understand what feasibility is if i say something is feasible yeah, that can be oh no 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 not visible feasible excuse me huh? for my pronunciation huh feasible means uh so uh, in 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 other words if i explain it in a shorter way uh, in a simple way things which are appropriate suitable for you i can explain it mathematically but i don't want to go there but feasible means if if let's say i give you simple example i start a project for which i say okay and i have a budget let's say uh, 1 million real i start the project and start spending on it and the budget when i identify uh, all the requirements when i do some planning in the planning phase i calculate everything which part of the project requires how much budget if the budget remains under 1 million i can say i can afford it that this project does not go beyond the financial constraint i can say that, yes this project is feasible for us we can do this but if i only do have just uh, 1 million real but the project requires 5 million real so that is infeasible economically financially so when we arrive on a go no go axis every time we need to determine either still it is feasible for us to go further or not right 
Now this feasibility can be seen or can be viewed uh, in terms of different things as I said financially feasible. Yes, to do everything, to do any project, we need some resources that requires finance. But sometimes it we need to see either it is technically feasible or not. We do have budgets, but we do not have sufficient expertise that can handle with the technicalities or technically it is even if I do have some guy who can write down a program for me in Java or C++ but sometimes what happen when you start coding you guys might have experienced in doing your assignments sometimes you are stuck with your assignment oh what to do next you try hard but technically you, do, you cannot solve the problem. Let's say for instance, some guy, he wants to establish a connection through Bluetooth between his PC and, and, and let's say some device, a mobile. This guy works very hard but he says, oh, technically it is very complicated for me. It is not feasible to me technically. I may hire somebody else who is better flexible with technicalities. But still technically it is possible. So right, not by him, by maybe somebody else. But sometimes what happens, technically something, to do something, technically it is not feasible by any way. Right? So, uh, we sometimes need to see either it is feasible, different perspectives or not. I hope now you guys understand that. What do we mean by here, by go no go access? Feasible and uh, limitation Yes. I mean, we can decide this access to be here or somewhere else. So in fact, before starting analysis for the next part of your problem, before increasing the scope of the problem, we first, we decide either really we should go or because we may arrive at a conclusion. We may arrive at a conclusion, oh, I have done some part of, I don't think it is really feasible to go further. So I will stop it. If I am fully restricted by all these things. Any questions until here? Uh, you mean connected to each other means uh, can I do an implementation after analysis? No, uh, does that actually the guy has asked, asked a question all these phases are connected to each other or not am I right okay now when you say are connected to each other this means I can do some analysis and after the analysis I can directly implement which is actually implementation is not possible without design you know sometimes what happens some development teams they do some analysis actually there are different methodologies that we will follow but analysis and design these are two phases which are mostly in all types of different methodologies this is an evol evolutionary model they do have but some method go further this will better become clear the problem is if you start implementing anything without a design you may have several flaws some people what do they do what do they do is uh, they have a problem in mind okay they say yes we have a problem 
and I have this solution. They open up Java, they open up C++ or whatever, they start writing the code directly. That serves their purpose. That serves their purpose. But actually, but there may be very some flaws, some holes, which can cause the system failure in future. So to be more precise, more accurate, more comfortable, to build up a reliable, it is necessary after the analysis, we must carefully perform the design phase. Right? Any questions? You can see here slight details of these phases. Planning an organization's total information systems needs are identified. So actually all the planning is based on the needs. Needs of needs of needs of when I say needs of this means I mean, I need this, I need a bottle, I need something, I need some other device. So, needs of, needs of system and user and anything that is involved, any entity. We defined the term entity in the beginning. I hope that you guys remember what entity is, right? Entity could be anything. Uh, analysis system requirements are studied and then structured. So we are just formally defining these terms. Uh, I hope that you guys now do have some idea of STLC life cycle. But I believe still you guys must have certain confusions because this, these confusions will remain there unless you actually perform, unless you uh, actually see the examples performed. I hope that in, in the lab exercises, uh, you will be uh, doing some exercises with some examples and they will explain you how to understand that. But anyway, we will also see in the next lectures as well. It is a description of the recommended solution that is converted into logical and then physical system specifications. Normally, uh, design is based on two different uh, stages. One is logical design, the other is physical design. Logical design is all about in your imaginations. That is all about in your thoughts. You say, okay, if I do some part of the problem this way, that can be solved. But this is still logical. You need to transform your design from the logical concept, which is abstract, which is still abstract on papers. You need to physically transform it from logical into physical. That in reality that can be seen. Physical design that can be seen. We may use some materials for that. So the logical design, it's all functional features of the system chosen for development in analysis are described independently of any computer platform. This is another important thing. If I make a design for some system, I do not care about the platform, either it will be executed or run on a Windows based machine or Mac based or some Linux based. They do have different requirements, right? So. I should not keep in mind regarding my 
design the logical design is independent from any platform that can be run on any system when we talk about physical design then we may need to transform our logical into that if we want to run that system on windows based what are the physical changes or transformations that require to be changed from to transform it into from the logical into the physical so that that might have different requirements okay physical uh, physical design the logical specification of the system from logical design are transformed into the technology specific details technology specific details from which all programming and system construction can be accomplished uh, i can design something in my system which is not possible to be to implement using a certain tool that is better accomplished let's say with c++ instead of some other programming language or that can better be accomplished by java instead of some other programming language so i have to choose for instance developing a website developing a what language or what tool you normally use for that ha huh? php right so php is technically better supported to accomplish to develop some site maybe in java or in c++ you may need to work harder now uh, normally some uh, tools are available that only gives you the flex i mean that gives you the flexibility just drag and drop and to design an interface for that website even that can also be done in several languages but to build up a cert it depends on a type of application it is web based it is mobile application it is some desktop application so physical design is dependent on these platforms you need to choose a certain technology implementation the information system is coded tested installed and supported in the organization in fact uh, i earlier used a term deployment that is the same thing that after the implementation means to write down a code but in general here in stlc life cycle when i say implementation that means that we have coded we have written the program in a certain language we have tested it we have installed it into the organization for which we have developed and then it's uh, provided support to the organization for for proper maintenance and feedback so this is all that is required in implementation phase and then finally maintenance you can add one more thing here feedback which is not written here but anyway that's all these phases are summarized here in this table you can see here you can go home and you can also take a print of these slides hopefully uh, that better serves to have everything on one paper okay <clears throat> until now any questions do you have any questions before i any go any further can someone name the can someone name quickly the methodology we have recently discussed other than the general methodology stlc cycle what was the name let me know quickly ha huh? yes that is a system development but it's an evolutionary 
the methodology we have. Yes, also called spiral, correct? Right. Okay. <coughs> Again, I would remind you guys that the most important parts of the emphasize, the emphasize during this course would be on analysis and design. In fact, these are the two phases which are the core of the system development process, the core heart right okay <clears throat> now there is a methodology we call it as waterfall waterfall methodology is also one of the available methodologies in systems development life cycle Uh, if you look at the slide, you will see that it looks like a waterfalls. Right? He is very much right. You, once you are fallen down, once the water is fallen down from the hill, from the mountain, it cannot go back. Even if it is possible to go back, it would be very costly. It would be very costly. Normally, this methodology is adopted by uh, construction companies. Waterfall methodology now is not adopted in systems development, in, in, in developing IS or information systems. Why? Now, it is not suitable. For instance, give me an example, let me give me an, ex uh, let me give you an example that if, if a construction company has is following this methodology, once they have done anything, they want, cannot change. For example, they have constructed a huge building and after they have, they saw, they realized that, oh, there is a flaw in the foundations of the building. It would be very difficult for them to go back to the foundations. The huge building would be on stake, would be on risk that may collapse while working with the foundations, while disturbing again the foundations. So in this kind of methodology and information systems are developed, once it is too time taking, once we start planning, we do not go to the analysis phase until we realize that our planning phase is completely finished. Once we start analyzing stuff, we must focus on the analysis. We do not go back to the planning phase because, you know, in this methodology, the things or problems are investigated too deeply. So when you go down so deep, then it is not possible to go again and again and check things so deeply. Once you are out of that, well, that's it. So you have to make sure that it is, it is flawless, right? So it will take more time. After the analysis, once we move on to the design, we cannot go back to the analysis. Once we have implemented our system, it is not possible 
Now, after implementation or after design, somebody say, oh, we forgot that thing in the planning phase. So I cannot go back and then replan my stuff. That would be affected throughout the way until implementation. So, waterfall methodology is not recommended in software in developing. You know, nowadays software development is quite dynamic. Every day, the user needs are changing. If this phone is developed, there are lots of applications running on it, right? One day, users say, if you guys do not give any feedback to Samsung, the rest of the world is giving them feedback according to their needs. They send them. So what they are, they are continuously developing and improving it. If they start working following the same methodology, so once a requirement is identified by a user and sent to the company, the organization, development team, they need, if they really feel that this need is also identified by several other users or by plenty of users. So what do we, what would they do is they would actually try to incorporate that stuff into their system. If they say, oh, we are following a waterfall methodology, so all the requirements identified by the user once they cannot be incorporated into the system. Right? Any questions until here? No? Question? Yes. Usually we need the best. Sorry? Usually we need the best. That means uh, I can't just start with an analysis uh, before uh, planning. In fact, planning and analysis they are quite, you know, uh, interrelated with each other. Indeed, when you are doing a planning, unconsciously you are working or doing some part of the analysis as well. Or when you are doing some analysis, you are in parallel working on some part of the planning as well. Right? I cannot say, I cannot draw a hard line between planning and analysis, between analysis and design, or between design and implementation. This is what waterfall does. If I draw a line, I say, okay, now I finish my planning, now I am here in analysis phase. Now it is difficult to go back. Why difficult to go back? Good question. Uh, as I said earlier, given an example, that such methodology is normally followed by construction companies. If the whole building is constructed, somebody says, oh, I don't need this design of this building. I want to change it. what they have to do. Do you think they can really go back so easily in the foundations and make changes according to the new requirements? Impossible. Even if it is possible, that would be too costly. They would have to drop down, collapse the whole building. That cost much. They have spent already too much money on it while building it. Once it is collapsed, that's all loss. Similarly, in systems development, uh, in information systems as well. Right? Any question? Good? Okay. <clears throat> so, in short or precisely, I would say system requirements 
are locked in in this methodology after being determined they cannot be changed so we need to be very very careful while determining our if you are following waterfall methodology in <coughs> in developing an information system limited user involvement only in the requirement phase normally users and users are not involved in identifying the requirements too much focus on milestones deadlines of sdlc phases to the determinant to the detriment of sound development practices too much focus means uh on the deadlines because i'm sure that after one month i have to finish my analysis because after that i know that i cannot come back that is why i am highly conscious about the deadline if i understand that okay no problem even if there is a problem after the deadline we can easily go back and make changes in planning and analysis so i would not focus on the deadlines i will work in parallel but anyway it's always good and recommended to keep in mind the deadlines we are working on okay before i uh, move on to another methodology you know uh, one more thing Uh, uh, about these methodologies, that I would not be discussing these methodologies in too much detail, because these are also covered in another course after this, after two five zero, in quite detail there in two five one software engineering. So you will see, uh, you will discuss these methodologies in quite detail. Uh, over there as well so i'm just going through hmm? sorry any questions it look like i mean feeling let's take a feedback <laughs> 